Hey, what's up, y'all? You got Sean here again with another episode of Swanks and Sons Chrome and Diesel Shop. Actually, this is kind of a follow-up episode of the previous repairs I was starting on was on a kingpin job on this international truck. If you guys remember, I posted a video last week and I had to stop because I was getting backed up with other work. It was a bunch of quick stuff that I had to knock out and this guy was fighting me every inch of the way. Now, I'm gonna sit the phone down here and show you guys kind of my setup here to help myself out if you're a single mechanic trying to do stuff like this and you don't have a lot of help or if you want to prevent a bunch of smashed fingers if you have no hammer skills whatsoever. Now, let me sit this phone down here. Give me a second here. All right, look at that, here's the truck. Let's see if I can get this working here. I don't know how good you guys are gonna be able to see me, but I'm gonna do what I can. Uh, it looks pretty good right there, as y'all can see. All right. All right, so I'm gonna try to stay out of the way of everything I got going here. So, as you can see, my setup here that I got to drive this kingpin out, by the way, kingpin wow a solid piece of metal that if you do not grease or shim it too tight shim it too loose put stupid bearings in there regardless lubrication is the key to a lot of trucks man if you want to help yourself from any kind of headache on repairs like this it makes it so much easier and faster but put all that aside this guy like grease so my setup here back to that spiel just got a simple 20 ton pilot jack. Oh, all right, they're going to the Got a simple 20 ton pilot jack here. And right now, this is not my original setup here. First, I had a block of wood underneath this guy right here so that I could set it right on the bottom side of the kingpin. Because this guy was being so hard to cut out, and these wedge pins that go, I will show you in a second, they go right inside here to lock the kingpin, I had to blow them out with a torch because they would not drive out. I had to blow them out with a torch. It's just a tedious process. Anyway, back to this. So, what I got now, you see I already got the kingpin start to drive up, and now it's working its way up pretty easy that I might be able to show you if it wants to cooperate with me. So, but you take everything out of the way once everything is disconnected from this guy. You can take the kingpin wedges out, torch them out, whatever you gotta do. And now this guy here, so that I don't smash anybody's fingers from holding this right here, I got pretty good sledgehammer skills, but, this was gonna take a while, so I decided to do this another way. After getting this set up, you wanna hit. This center part is the axle beam. You wanna jack the whole suspension up until it has some pressure on it. And what I got is jack stands here. So I raise it up about an inch from my jack stand off the spring so that I can see if it's starting to move its way up or down. And then all you do, you take your sledgehammer, be careful, and you smack on the back side of the axle beam, which I will show you here in a second here, and it's gonna easy start popping this guy up. It takes away a lot of time, and if you, if you're like I said, if you're working by yourself like I do, this is so much easier. So, let me just see if you guys can notice this right here. I'm gonna start jacking this up, like I said, the hard part's done. As I jack it up, if this guy will do it, but you probably won't now. And there you go. Just like that. When it gets enough pressure, it's going to keep popping up until you get all the way out. And you can just work this bottle jack right here until you get the kingpin all the way loose. Makes it so much easier. Now, I'm going to come over here since I uh, find a rag here to wipe my hands with. I'm going to show you guys a little more what I was talking about. Ah, getting my phone all kinds of dirty. But either way, let me get back on my scenario that I was not filming because I would have ran out of phone life easily. So, oh, get here. Here we go. All right, I'm back on it. So this hole right here, that's the lower wedge. As you can see, it's been a little high because I had to use some heat on it. That is the upper kingpin wedge. That guy drove out really easy. But if you do not put anti-seize on these wedges, that guy right there is the upper wedge. Not the lower one, I don't throw them away because they turned in a bunch of metal chunks. But if you do not anti-seize those guys, mechanics, drivers, do-it-yourselfers, it will be a pain in the ass next go round. So look, take that few seconds, put some anti-seize on there, and you don't have to hammer down on the gun. You can snug it down, and that way, 
it don't force itself in there any further than it needs to. Because trust me, it will if you air gun that guy down and don't have a loose finger. So either way, after taking a torch and blowing this guy all the way out on both ends, because little tricks with the torch, or not tricks, let me set this light down, there you go. Scenarios with the torch. Once you get this, the threads cut off that are sticking out of here with the torch, you blow through, it's gonna stop cutting about an inch through because everything's gonna start blowing backwards. And it's gonna melt your torch tip. It's gonna make it sound like a hot machine gun when it's just clogging up the tip and you're gonna be just be fighting yourself every inch of the way. So, what you do? It's pretty easy. These things are not that strong in metal, these wedges. So, what I end up doing, if you have a problem and you can't get it hot enough to drive out with the air hammer, punch, whatever you set up that you use to fit in this hole to help drive it out. What you can do is what I had to do on this guy, only a couple times I've done this, just take a center, just flatten it out on the inside with the air hammer and whatever, so that way you get a nice indention in there. And then all you do, you take your drill with a badass drill bit, you drill through that guy so that when you put the torch in from the front side or the back side, you don't have any anything blocking the torch to stop the torch up. You're gonna be able to blow right through it, and that's when you can get the center hot and start working it and blowing it out without damaging the axle. And I'm gonna walk over to this other side and show you guys that I got it off too. So there, voila, there's what it looks like when you get it drove out. I had to use the same setup with the bottle jack and whatnot on both sides because both of these guys were just a pain trying to drive out. So, there's what one looks like, and I was able to actually save everything. Nothing got damaged. Everything actually started coming out okay after beating on it with a sledgehammer for a while. Now, the next step I gotta do is I have to, I'm gonna flip this one over since it's out. So this guy has already been replaced once down the road. You can tell because these spiral bushings, these are aftermarket bushings. So that you don't have to take it to a shop, especially if you're a do-it-yourself or stuff like that, save yourself a little money. You don't have to take it to a shop or a suspension shop and get the center honed out. So that if you get OEM, that means factory bushings, kingpins, you have to take those to a shop to get the center honed out so, it, so the bushings can get press fitted to the kingpins. With these kinds, you don't have to. These spiral bushings, they're not bad. I don't mind them, I've used them a few times. But you can still get aftermarket bushings that if you're careful enough and got the right spacers, you can just tap them all in and they're the solid sleeve type with still the copper ring. You can tap them on in, works the same way. But this is gonna be pretty simple. And this top side here done came out on me when I was driving it out. Actually look, there's the old kingpin out right there guys. Boom. Oh, hey, yeah, this is still one of them that I had to cut off. This guy came out really, this is on this side, the upper side. This guy actually went too much of a headache. Once I started cutting in on the back side, it was able to heat up just enough, and then I was able to take a hammer and drive it out the rest of the way. But there it sits. That other guy had to cut all the way out. He was pissing me off. So, back over here. So, the next video you guys see, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and have the bushings pressed in. I'm gonna do it myself here. Like I said, I have aftermarket bushings that are fit already to the kingpin. Make sure you get that. Get that clarified with your parts guy. So after I get that, then I'll show you guys how I got it set back up here on the axle. I'm not gonna show you everything with my phone because I will lose all my phone light. So in the next video, hopefully, if I can get it done today, if I get left alone enough, then I will show you guys an almost finished product with both spindles set back on and it reshimmed. And then I will give you guys uh, some more information how I did that. All right, this is Sean. I'll see you guys here in a bit.